I, I think that natural gas production is an incredible opportunity for our country to move to transition to a cleaner fuel. Natural gas is less carbon intensive. Um, it is, uh, when you talk about conventional pollutants, the ones I mentioned before, it burns cleaner. It is uh, an efficient fuel. It could be used for uh, uh, power plants, but it never had been in this country because we didn't have enough. You didn't waste your natural gas on generating power. You used coal for that. So you can see where a transition from coal to natural gas would be cleaner, more efficient, and would move us in the way, in the direction of that 2017 or 2020 goal for carbon and other pollution. So in that way, it's very good. What has to happen is it has to be produced responsibly. It has to be produced in a way that doesn't sacrifice air quality and water quality. And the, here are the places where I think that needs to, uh, where it manifests itself. In order to frack, you tend to have a lot of wells in, in more densely than you might in the past. Uh, and so there's a lot of activity around those wells, and that has an impact on air quality. We know it already. EPA will soon be coming out with regulations to deal with the air quality around natural gas and oil production because we have places in Wyoming now that have some pretty significant ozone issues. We are starting to be worried that whether it's in parts of Texas, there are ozone issues in Fort Worth area around the Barnett Shale, whether you go to Pennsylvania, all of a sudden you're gonna have uh, huge smog problems where you never had them before. These are rural areas and people's health will be affected. Um, second is, it takes an incredible amount of water to frack a well, one million to three million gallons every well and some wells are fracked more than once. I met with, I was in Houston, uh, I guess Saturday, and I was at the University of Houston and met with some uh, CEOs of oil and gas companies and some researchers, and they're doing cool stuff. They're coming up with ways to use brackish water from down in the earth to frack a well instead of fresh water, which we need to drink, right? And last but not least, fracking is itself, I made you know some folks mad recently because they asked me in a hearing, is, does fracking, can you name one case where fracking has polluted water? And I said no, because the truth of the matter is the concern had been there are chemicals in that frack water. And until recently, and actually even today, companies don't have to disclose what's in those chemicals. And we at EPA are exempt from regulating them. There's an exemption in the Safe Drinking Water Act. We don't regulate them, except for diesel. Um, and so people have been worried, well, what are you putting down that hole, and is it going to end up in my drinking water supply? Um, the holes are much deeper than the drinking water supply. So the only way that happens is the much more common problem, which is how the well is drilled, how it's cased, how it's developed, and how it's closed. If you get a bad operator in there, somebody who's not responsible, who's not uh, uh, seeing how important it is to get this right, they can contaminate an aquifer because think of a well as just a big, it, it's a big open portal to anything it touches, any aquifer, any strata. Um, and so there needs to be, I think, some standards. I believe uh, several things are happening federally. First, at the federal level, the president has asked Stephen Chu, the Secretary of Energy, to commission a panel. It's led by uh, Sue Tierney. Uh, and they are giving recommendations on how to do this natural gas development uh, and fracking responsibly. In the meantime, EPA also has some regulatory authority. We're putting out soon uh, guidance on what to do if you want to inject diesel as part of fracking fluids. We have a two-year study going on. We just announced seven case studies around the country. I think two are in Texas, but that's a two-year study. Uh, we'll be coming out with standards for air pollution around uh, natural gas and oil development. And last but not least, when all that water comes back, in some places it's put in ginormous, huge pools and sits there. And that is a source of contamination all by itself. And so we need to determine how to stop that from happening, get in front of this. Or as one of the CEOs said the other night, you know, we need to be in front of your regulation. And I absolutely agree with that. I think natural gas production will thrive in this country unless the American people or investors come to believe that it's not going to be financially viable or it's going to hurt their health and communities. And if either one of those two happen, It'll sort of be like the uh, problems that the nuclear industry had for a while, where nobody wanted them, and now again, uh, people are concerned. So they need to avoid that. And the way you avoid that is by stepping up to regulation rather than running from it. And for a while there, they looked like they were running from it. I, I'm hoping that enlightened CEOs are coming back around. <laughs>